So I work on uh, the material diamond and uh, natural diamond crystals, how they form in the earth and um, their link to the carbon cycle. Uh, there's a very important part of the cycle which uh, has recently been recognized as missing and that is the feedback from the deep earth into carbon in the atmosphere and the air we breathe. The most obvious way we can demonstrate this is connected is through volcanoes which erupt large amounts of carbon dioxide and uh, we have ways of trying to measure the carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere which come from volcanoes. Ultimately some of that carbon may even come from diamonds. Um, so diamonds um, are you know, the, famous for jewellery but they turn out to be almost uh, more important in terms of their role they play for storing diamond as a reservoir inside the deep earth. Uh, we've been working with diamond for uh, many years. Um, we, do, we do experiments on diamond to see how diamond grows. Um, we look at inclusions in diamonds to find out their age and where diamond comes from. Um, we use uh, analytical tools like the electron microprobe and experimental facilities like uh, high temperature, high pressure experiments to simulate the conditions under which diamonds have uh, survived for long periods of time um, deep in the earth. Uh, it's important to me that we uh, relate diamond to the bigger picture of carbon, carbon in the earth, carbon in super earths, carbon in the um, planetary sciences. And uh, this involves not only the uh, generation of high pressure and temperature as you go down into the earth, but also the transient phenomenon of shock. Uh, shock energy when things collide is incredibly important for um, some textures in materials and particularly the um, appearance of a, a, a phase of diamond um, relatively um, little known, but perhaps more important that is related to UCL, diamond in a form called Lonsdaleite. Um, so we've been working on uh, how Lonsdaleite can form during shock and this involves um, using a library of materials which are natural and synthetic and doing experiments at large national facilities like uh, X-ray synchrotron sources in uh, Harwell in the UK to determine their detailed structure. So we're kind of working between um, macroscopic large specimens which we can collect in the field, uh, microscopic microscopes where we look at textures of materials at smaller scale, and then nanoscale information down at the crystal scale to determine their material properties and how one relates with another. Um, I, I, I work as part of uh, a group uh, run from North America called the Deep Carbon Observatory and they have been running for nearly five years. It's a 10-year program to look at an inventory of the deep carbon on the Earth. Uh, deep carbon reservoirs, high uh, extreme uh, pressure temperature carbon, uh, mineralogy of carbon, biology of carbon, and even uh, high, uh, carbon, high, high pressure forms of carbon and their relation to uh, deep energy. Um, so uh, the renovation of, um, or exploration rather, for um, hydrocarbons, uh, conventional and uh, non-conventional shale gas, all that uh, may ultimately be related to the total inventory of carbon on the planet and how the deep carbon cycle relates to the carbon in the atmosphere that we breathe. So the carbon cycle that students and children learn about in schools um, has ultimately a deeper connection, which is actually very poorly understood and we're trying to discover information about the deep carbon cycle.